Well, over the last couple of years, there's been great concern about the state of football in Tasmania. And there's been a lot of talk around bars and around football clubs of how the way forward is to be. Now, a lot of people talk, but not many people act. And I'm joined here today by two people who know a fair bit, a bit, a fair bit about Tasmanian football. To my left, I have uh, Paul Curtin, who was chairman of the North Hobart Football Club between 2002 and 2009. And uh, sitting to my left here is Steve Alley, uh, former president of the Glenorchy Football Club. Sorry, Steve, I don't have the years that you were there. So, gentlemen, long time. <laughs> it was a, as a long time. Surely Tasmanian football is healthy and vibrant and going forward. Steve, do you not agree with this? Uh, no, I certainly don't. Uh, I, I just, and I'm sorry to use a word like this, but I think uh, football and football clubs in Tasmania have been hijacked by AFL Tasmania. I think um, there's a cancer in football at the moment and it, it's all to do with the administration of the game and something needs to be done about it. This is the opportune time to do something about it with the new licences and um, I think clubs need to listen to their supporters, they need to listen to their club members and they need to start saying enough's enough, our club's going down the tube, we need to do something about it. The standard of the football's fine but so was the standard of the football in the regional league prior to the statewide league, there wasn't too much wrong with it then either. But the good part about it in the regional league is that the financial side of clubs was good, we were all quite vibrant, everything was going pretty well and um, I can tell you now there are clubs out there that are struggling big time in relation to their finances because they don't get funded from the AFL, from AFL TAS as they should be. Crowds have dropped off so they're not getting people through the gates. Sponsorships dropping off because you've got the AFL teams and I guess that was to be expected anyway. Um, it's a good thing we've got the AFL team, so I'm certainly not knocking that. But um, we're listening and I, we're hearing from the supporters and the members of clubs. They just have had enough of a failed statewide league competition. You've mentioned some pretty big issues and one of the things is probably the finance of the clubs and maybe the sustainability of those clubs. Yeah, look, I, I just don't think it can work. Um, for a start, the players that run out on the field every Saturday, their salary cap or the, the fee that you're paying them to run out onto the football field isn't anywhere near covered by the gates. Mm -hmm. Now, you'd think that that's what would be the reason for paying them the, the, their mm -hmm. payments, the number of people coming through the gate paying the money to cover that. It's nowhere near it. So strugs, uh, s clubs are struggling even more because they're not getting people through the gates. And the most damning thing about that is AFL TAS say they don't care about crowds. They're not interested in crowds. Well, they mightn't be, but clubs certainly are. Yeah, that's an interesting thing that you point there. And here we are in the back Black Buffalo Hotel, not far away from North Hobart, where on a Saturday afternoon there'd be a lot of people having their meals in readiness to go and watch the footy. And I guess that's the concern, isn't it, the relevance of the local footy. Why is it that people don't want to go along and look at it? Well, they, they don't want to travel to Burnie, they don't want to travel to Devonport, they certainly don't want to travel to Launceston either. And once they get out of the habit of coming to the football, mm. they find other things. Mm. And we've lost a lot of people away from football because of statewide. And it's going to be difficult to get them back, there's no question of that. But if you're a club that's playing a South Launceston or a Burnie or a Devonport as a home game, your home game revenue drops by about $10,000 a game. Mm. Now, that's a lot of money to recover. AFL TAS have never even considered that in their funding to clubs. And if it's three games in a season, there's $30,000 that the clubs are worse off compared to the regional situation because if you were playing North Hobart and Glenorchy at KG5, you've got two sets of crowds there. You've got the North Hobart supporters, you've got the Glenorchy supporters. You play South Launceston, and I think just not too long ago, Paul, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, you did a head count there, and there are about 15 to 20 South Launceston supporters. The home team are not getting the revenue they should be getting. Mm -hmm. Now, if AFL TAS aren't prepared to fund that, then that's the reason the whole competition's going to go down the Google eventually. Yeah, the point about being 
not caring if crowds go to football. That's one of my genuine concerns, Paul, is that I don't think that's quite fair on these young men who are giving up of all their time. They deserve better than that, surely. Yes, as, as Steve rightly says, it's about the uh, financial viability of clubs. And uh, one of the big impacts that we've had with the uh, current model, and obviously is going into the next model, is that uh, the number of teams per club has uh, dropped from uh, three teams to two teams. Now, that has impacts upon clubs, uh, not only from the financial viability mm -hmm. by having a, uh, a greater mass of people around your club, it also provides the opportunity for a a pool of volunteers to support the club and uh, with fewer people around the club now it's putting a great has a great impact upon uh, our volunteers all our volunteers are being overstretched and uh, you know when we look at solutions uh, a three team per club model would uh, certainly uh, certainly assist I think the other big issue with um, the new model and we've seen with the old model, is that community clubs can be no longer guaranteed to retain uh, their brands and history. Now, that's fundamental to communities, and especially if you want your footy club to be relevant uh, mm. to your community. And uh, to have those things arbitrarily taken away, I think, uh, you know, it's an indictment upon some of the decision making. Yeah, well, your club's been affected by that, Paul, and from an outsider looking in, I think it's despicable what's happened to Hobart and North Hobart. The tradition, they're iconic clubs in Tasmanian football, and for them to be treated the way they've been treated is just disgraceful. It's certainly uh, an opportunity for AFL Tas to uh, try and make, uh, uh, try and right that issue in whatever the, the final look of this new uh, licence for Hobart City might be, but uh, I can assure you that uh, it'll want to have a look, a lot of North Hobartness about it, or else um, it won't be getting any support. I think one of the other big issues too is uh, around the inequitable distribution of, of money to clubs, mm. and uh, I know that uh, Steve is very close uh, to, to some of this, and uh, that's certainly impacting. It, uh, I'm sure Steve will make some comments. Yeah, look, mate, I, I've, I've been arguing about this for a long time and um, it's no secret of the fact that North Hobart, Hobart, Glenorchy and North Launceston have only been getting the $50,000 to employ their junior development or their coaching person, but other clubs have been getting 100000 and so on. And I, I've always said Devonport and South Launceston needed some help when they were on the bottom of the ladder and I actually said it at a president's meeting, I don't mind them getting a little bit more funding to bring them up to the level of the other clubs because an even competition is what we really want. But to be giving the money to the Burnies and Clarences of this world and not giving it to the Glenorchies, North Hobart, Hobarts and, and uh, North Launceston's, uh, obviously a sign that you've got to question whether this business with Hobart and North Hobart has been engineered and our Glenorchy and North Launceston, the next cab's off the rank.